Today we're talking about the artistic evolution of Gantz, but first, thank you to the sponsor of today's video. NordVPN has 5200 plus servers in 60 countries. Find a server near you for better speed or in a faraway location for more content and streaming services like Netflix and Crunchyroll. You can use it on six devices and it's available on every major platform from Windows, Android, iOS, Mac OS, Linux, and even Android TV. Open the map, click on a location, and you'll be connected in seconds. It's that easy. Click the link in the pinned comment and description below and use the code Alex Enterprises to get a two year subscription plus one extra month free. It's risk free because it's satisfied or refunded for the first 30 days. Thanks NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Gantz is an interesting story, an interesting manga, and an interesting style of graphic novel. From Hiroya Oku, this is an action-adventure series about people who die and instantly discover the afterlife of the Gantz Room, a main menu of sorts with the game they're forced to play being an all-out shooter between them and horrifying creatures of unknown origin. It's a series filled with some nasty deaths, some incredible set pieces, and some of the best action in all of manga. For all that which could turn people off, Gantz has gone on to do very well for itself, spawning a series of films, an anime adaptation, a Netflix film, which is one of the best adaptations I've ever seen, and even more spin-off mangas. Spanning from 2000 to 2013, Hiroya Oku's evolution has a large development here. The way in which he illustrates his main characters is one of the highlights for me. We go from having characters with minimal expressions, even in times of stress, to having them never not display their emotions at every twist and turn. Even in terms of their bodies, we can see a general blankness to the frames of the characters, but a complete 180 by the end, with a thoroughly clear understanding of the human anatomy. He's practically gone from fundamentals into a groove of his own. I think it's quite ironic, actually, that this development in art is reflective of the story and themes of the characters, too. Underneath all of the action and games, there's an interesting narrative running through the main story and its main character, Kei Kurono. When the story begins, he is a horrible, nihilistic adolescent, not wanting to help others and choosing instead to judge them from afar. It's not just him either, this is largely betrayed to be the vast majority of people. When things go badly for Kei though, he screams and cries and suffers just as those he judged. When he comes across Nishi, this experienced Gantz player who is similarly nihilistic and wants to work alone, he ends up biting the dust in one of the most horrific scenes of the entire manga. All this experience extinguished in an instant. This, alongside the death of his friends, starts a change in Kei towards the better. A symbolic realization of how ugly it can be to behave the way he had, driven by the graphic nature of the art. Flash forward towards the end of the manga, when the entire world is at threat, the whole planet calls out for help generally mirroring the beginning of the manga in a polar opposite way. Kurono takes up the task and conquers the very flaw in his character that set the entire story up. It's so interesting to see this boy who lives in such a simple, bleak way go through development to the point of caring and looking out for others, be reflected in the artwork like the way it is, from the blankness of drawing style to the clearly emotive drawing style. This manga, starting in the year 2000, is also pretty famed for its usage of technology for its production. Oku has talked about how he renders digital 3D backgrounds, making them in software, before printing them off and going over them with line art. It's a really cool visual effect which makes the characters stand out, but also amplifies the alien feel of the weapons, items, and instruments around them, from the guns to the strange technology, and eventually even for the aliens themselves. The effects, incrementally layering, convey power to the aliens and separate themselves from the main characters, who always remain traditionally drawn, with minimal effects. It's really great for maintaining that sense of danger, especially with villains like the new Rarihan, a creature that had seemingly endless forms getting more and more detailed and twisted, a humanoid figure that descends slowly into a cavalcade of disturbing features that barely resemble anything anymore. Oku then switched this up towards the end with a more simple design, the sudden clash of styles, creating an even deeper sense of the depraved. This clash of styles is something Oku excels at, both with the characters against these rendered backgrounds, the characters against these starkly different creatures, and within those creatures in terms of their own powers. Like all really good sci-fi, Hiroya Oku knows how to get under people's skin. Almost like a mangaka's equivalent of John Carpenter, it's that skillfully thin separation of the human and the other, like the special effects in The Thing, that cut through us the quickest. 
As one of the forefront mangas to display background art like this, it's also fun to see the advancement of technology happen as it released, with simplistic rooms and darkly lit streets back in the early 2000s, to an entire school getting eviscerated, to an entire city with hundreds of skyscrapers and buildings getting destroyed. It's a manga that came out at just the right time, as the special effects of the later series wouldn't have been doable back at the beginning of the series, and Gantz without this weird, cursed imagery just wouldn't be the same. Something really interesting to me is the very existence of Gantz G and Gantz E, two spin-offs to the franchise which establish a new team and a new time. G being the story of a class dying and awakening in the room, and E being set in Edo, Japan. Both of the stories are written by Yoku, but the artwork is done with new mangakas, with G being illustrated by Keith Izuk and E being done by Jin Kagetsu. Unfortunately, the artwork of G looking back was really quite a step back in a way that I don't think works for Gantz. It went for a largely 3D appearance. Maybe it was going for something new, or maybe it was trying to mimic the original, but I think the fact that I can't clearly tell you is a part of the problem. The 2D drawings aren't the strongest and make me think that perhaps there's a slight reliance in 3D to take your eyes away from that. And that's fine, but it does end up as a bit of distraction when these main events are being drawn traditionally. Gantz E, however, is one of the best looking spin-off mangas that I've ever actually seen. There are two clear things that I can instantly tell you. One is that it's pretty clearly aspiring to capture that same art style of Hiroya Oku. But also the second point is that this is a manga made to put the artist into a spotlight. There is an evolution here already, where Kagetsu comes into his own. The more conventional illustrations growing into a really sleek, incrementally detailed work. It's a manga that releases monthly, but only has 10 to 20 pages, where others in the magazine have around 50. Despite this as well, there was a fight sequence with multiple chapters of action which received tons and tons of dedicated artwork. I think it was during this time, maybe, that Kagetsu managed to hone his skills. Because the current manga looks terrific, and there's a real possibility of Kagetsu's trajectory overtaking that of Oku. But seriously, if you like Gantz, you're missing out if you're not reading E. But anyway, I just wanted to give these spin-offs some acknowledgement. I also called Gantz O oh, one of the best adaptations I've ever seen, and I stand by that. Not that it's the best anime I've ever seen, or even the best anime of that year, but that it adapts the source material so well. O is one of the only cases of CGI in anime, to my mind, not disappointing, because it's used for all of the intense, monstrous designs that the arc in question, the Osaka arc, is famed for. They took one of the best, long-running fights in the entire manga and made it into one long survival experience that perfectly showcases what Gantz is when it's at its best. The art style and the entire veneer of grit and gore is conveyed brilliantly through this style, in a way that I haven't seen done better to this day. I think it's a great adaptation, because yes, it adapts the story, but also it adapts the way in which Oku drew this manga. The characters look themselves, but in a more realistic way. The realism being a feature to perhaps adapt the backgrounds that Oku draws. The tone of the whole film really captures that feeling that the manga sets up and acts as a great closing statement to address this evolution that Oku has pulled off. Hiroya Oku has since gone on to personally illustrate other series whilst writing these spin-offs. From 2014 to 2017, he made the series Inuyashiki, and from 2017 to 2021, he made Gigant. The first of the two was quite like Gantz, both in terms of its world outlook, but also in terms of carrying on the city-wide action sequences. And then the less said about Gigant, the better. Looking at his early work, it's absolutely fascinating to see the origins of a romantic comedy develop into what it has. The original Gantz series, the classic that it is, seems to have been the ultimate catalyst in Oku's artistic evolution. Thanks for watching. As always, let me know your thoughts down below with more franchises you'd like to see in the Artistic Evolution series. And also refrain from suggesting Bleach if you can. It's already been covered, not by me, but by a guy who went even so far as to ask my permission to make it, which is really nice of him. I'll link that in the description and pinned comments down below, so go and give that a watch. And whilst I have you, I also wanted to get your guys' thoughts on a podcast. This time next week, me and a friend are going to be doing a small half an hour podcast going through the IMDb Top 250 film list. And yeah, stay tuned for that and let me know what you think when that comes out, please. I would deeply appreciate it. I made a poll on the community tab. I would also like you to vote. Uh, it's just about interest. But yeah, look forward to that and normal content will continue throughout the coming weeks as well. Thank you to my patrons and everyone else. Thanks for watching. Like the video, comment your thoughts down below and have a wonderful night.